Hey there, hello and welcome. Thank you for being here. It's good to see you. Good day, good evening, good morning. Whenever you're watching this, wherever you are on the earth plane today. So today I want to talk to you about making assumptions and reading minds, right? So although I acknowledge that we are supposed to be equipped to read each other's minds, most of us are not quite there yet, right? And should proceed with extreme caution when attempting to read another one's mind. And actually, I would advise you to avoid it altogether. So earlier this week, I had a conversation with one of my clients and he showed up to me distraught. Okay, I'll tell you a little story about how his girlfriend had made a post on social media that was a little controversial for his community, right? His friends, his family, his, com his community, and it caused quite a stir, right? So there were several people who saw the post, the announcement, the statement that she had made on social media, and they had made all kinds of assumptions about what admit. They had made all kinds of assumptions about who she was talking about, and most of them were wrong or in incorrect. As a result, this caused a flurry with some loved ones, close friends and family of my client, and they all rushed to him with, you know, making assumptions about what she had said, what she meant, who she was talking about, and all the things. She also referenced someone else in her post. So like people do, they went over to their social media accounts and looked at what was going out, at what was being said and made some more assumptions, right? And, right, so now they're getting information second and third hand. And we all, I think we've all played the game telephone when we were a kid that's what we called it in school right we sat around in a circle and the first person tells the second person you know a story a sentence or two and then it's repeated around the circle and then by the time it gets back to the last person they say the thing out loud right it's whispered to each person they say the thing out loud and it's completely distorted from the original statement okay that's what happens when we pass on information unknowingly and you know and we don't mean to do that we mean to pass on accurate information and things get lost in translation so anyway as you can imagine my client was quite distressed the people involved in this communication were distressed as a result of people making assumptions and mind reads right so Again, although we're supposed to be able to read each other's minds, most of us aren't there yet. So I would, you know, my advice is to avoid it completely. So what could they have done instead, right? They could have, instead of making all these assumptions about who she was talking about and what she meant, they could have asked her, right? They could have asked her directly, right? Instead of going through my client, her boyfriend and partner, they could have asked her, were you talking about me, right? So I've had people say that to me, right? I've made posts about, um, all right, well, I'm talking about this, <laughs> right? And I've had people say to me, like, were you talking about, were you talking about me? Or other, you know, like other things. And that's a good, that's a good strategy, right? Come right out and ask. I saw your post on social media or whatever. I talked to so-and-so and I heard this story. Were, were you talking about me? And if so, and even if not, what did you mean? by that, right? Words mean different things to different people. So you could make a statement, someone could make a statement, and it doesn't mean the same thing to me that it does to you. So ask questions, effective communication, right? So our relationships are all about communication, right? The crux of the success of our relationship are, is, is communication. So it behooves us to learn some skills around that. And I hope that this short video helps you with that today, right? So ask the, ask the questions. Are you talking about me? What did you mean by that? Any other questions that might come to the surface based on your specific situation or communication? And in order to be able to do that, 
you need to have the space, right? You need to have space in your mind and in your emotions and in your being to be able to process, not just be triggered and have a triggered or knee jerk reaction. Okay. And one of the best ways, two of the best ways to do that is to one, have a daily, daily meditation practice. I'm going to put my meditation starter link somewhere in this post. So look for that. So you can, anyone can meditate. You can too, right? Even if it's five or 10 minutes a day, it'll, you'll start building the space, right? Cultivating the space that you need in order to be able to have these thought processes. And additionally, and also do release work, right? And um, I'm going to do a separate video about what release work is, how you can do release work. And that is, you know, that's how we process suppressed, process and let go, release accumulated negative emotions, if that makes sense. And I'm, I'm going to teach all of these wonderful things in my Sink Your Soul program, right? And the third thing is work with a coach, right? So my client came to me all distraught about what was going on in his world at the time, and I was able to guide him through this process. So and maybe you're thinking, you know, like that doesn't seem all that complicated, but when you're in your stuff, right? When you're, a, one of my favorite sayings is, you know, like you can't see the label from inside the jar. You can't read the label from inside the jar. So when, in, when you're in your stuff, when you're being triggered, it's hard to have these thought processes. It's, it's hard to process these experiences and this information in an effective manner. And a coach, teacher, or a mentor, or a group of like-minded individuals, which my Sink Your Soul program will be, is helpful to help you process this stuff. So look for that. I'll be sharing more about the program details, specifically in the coming weeks. And um, in the meantime, I hope this serves you. If, um, if this video did serve you, please like it, subscribe to my YouTube channel, or like and follow this wherever, wherever you're watching this. And let me know if it does serve you. Okay. So I'll look forward to seeing you in the next video. Until then, I will see you in the gap. I love you. Be blessed.